It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you and welcome to the Science Bowl. You know, we started this year with 40 elementary schools. We're headed down to the final four. One of those final four will be one of the two teams that are here today. Let's meet them right now. First, from Judith P. Hoyer Montessori, would you please say hello to Daniel Miller, Maya Goins, and Paul John Cruz. And from Robert Goddard Montessori, here is Nathan Parker Feng, Mason Vosmick, and Braden Keffer Leek. Now here are the categories of questions we use on the Science Bowl. Okay, Mr. Z, here's today's categories. Green things, questions about plants and all things green and growing. Zoo Parade, a Noah's Ark of questions about animals. Body systems, we'll see how much you know about yourself, about things like breathing and growing and digesting your food. Let's get physical. Questions that test your knowledge of physics and chemistry, earth science and space science. Then there's science potpourri. Here's a grab bag of science questions. Everything from air pollution to the kitchen zinc. And finally, Dateline Science. We'll ask you about science history and science in the news. And here on the Science Bowl, our game board. Yes, the easy questions are on the left. They're worth 5 and 10 points. Tougher ones, 15, 20, 25, the toughest of them all. Both of our teams started out at 50 points apiece. No penalties ever for incorrect answers. End of the two rounds, we will have the first of our final four semifinalists. Let's make sure everything works properly. Let's go to the red team. And Maya, would you try that buzzer? Seems A-OK. -okay. Good luck to you, to Daniel, and to Paul. And Mason, give that green team a push. Looking good over there, too. Mason and Braden and Nathan. Guys, congratulations for making it this far in our competition. You know, you guys are the best of the best. We love having you here. It's kind of the battle of the Montessori's here. Hoyer versus Goddard. We go alphabetically J before R, so Judith Hoyer and Maya, let's play that game. Green things for 15. Green things for 15? Green things for 15 points, teams. People who vape, smoke electronic cigarettes, are still inhaling this drug. <laughs> Judith nicotine. Hoyer. Nicotine. Nicotine, absolutely right, yes. Even though the burning part is not there, the nicotine, the addicting drug, is still there. Go red. Zoo Parade for 15. Zoo Parade for 15 points is a visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, if you would, please. You know, the top predator in the Arctic is the polar bear. But at the Antarctic, this is the top predator. Mason? The leopard seal. The leopard seal. Yeah. Absolutely right. Good answer. I was going to say, say name for a spotted cat in Africa. You didn't need that. Nicely done. Go green. Um, Body systems for 15. Body systems for 15 points. Teams, the areas in our body, in the abdomen and the thorax, where our organs are, have what same name as the decayed pits that are often found in teeth? Cavities. Judith Hoyer. Cavities. Cavities, absolutely right. The abdominal cavity, the thoracic cavity. Thank you, Paul. Go red. Let's get physical for 15. For 15 points. Teams, if your teacher gives you samples from the kitchen, different liquids, and red and blue litmus papers, you'll be able to do what with those papers and find out what about those liquids? <coughs> Judith P. Hoyer. What they have. What they have in them? More specifically. The pH levels? pH, absolutely right, whether they're acidic or basic. Nicely done. Thank you, Dan, for your help. Go, Maya. Science potpourri for 15. Potpourri for 15 points is a multiple choice question. Teams, in order to become a London cab driver, it takes three years of study because the cab drivers have to know each alley and each street in all of London. Because of that, their brains change. Which of the following parts grows bigger than it would be in us? Is it the hypotenuse, the Hammurabi, or the hippocampus? Which part grows larger in someone who memorizes a lot, Mason? Hippocampus. Hippocampus, yes, sir. Good answer. Go green. Right, it's the wrong um, Dateline science for 15. Dateline science for 15 points. Teams, your question is as follows. 
Marie Curie and her husband Pierre are credited with discovering, co-discovering this chemical element with the symbol R-A. Goddard? Pastor Nathan? Radium. Radium it is. Yes, sir. Thank you, Nathan. Go green. Um, let's get physical for 10. Let's get physical for 10 points. Teams, those terrible mudslides that we saw in California recently were a dramatic example of what wearing away process. Erosion. Erosion is right, Hoyer, for red. Go, Maya. Thank you, Paul. Science Pope Free for 10. Pope Free for 10 points. Teams, if you're te uh, testing computer software, the first test is the alpha test. But the test right before the consumer gets the product. Goddard? The beta test. Is the beta test. Yes, sir. Go. Um, Zuparade for 20. Zuparade, 20 points is another visual question. Look at the monitor in the studio, please. Teams, this is a tragic scene in Mongolia in Central Asia. 90% of the world's population of saiga antelope died recently because a bacterium that is normally innocuous became virulent. And what body system in the antelopes could not cope with that infection? Hoyer? The immune system? The immune system is right. Yes, ma'am. Good. Go. Body systems for 10. Body systems for 10 points. A quick check of the score. Hoyer 125. Goddard 105. This is body system for 10 points. Teams, in the animated movie Coco, the animators broke all the rules by giving these orbs to the skeletons. <laughs> Judith Hoyer. Eyes. Eyes, yes. Normally skeletons don't have eyes, but it kind of humanized them a little bit. Great movie. Go red. Green things for 10. Green things, 10 points, teams. If a seed is a future flower, one of these is a future fern. Goddard? Spore. Spore. Yes, sir. Good. Mason. Um. Zuparade for 10. Zuparade for 10 points. Teams, in the new movie, The Shape of Water, the monster lives mostly in water, but can also live on land, which makes him a what? Judith Hoyer? Amphibian. An amphibian, yeah. Good. Red. Go. Dateline signs for 10. Dateline signs for 10 points. Teams, some scientists now believe that the terrible bubonic plague that wiped out a large number of Europeans was not caused by these rodents. Foyer? Rats. Rats, yes. We know the fleas did it, but the rats have always been tarred. All right, 155 to 115, red team advantage, yours. Oh, hold that thought. The buzzer says our first round is over. Good game thus far. Don't go away. Round two, coming up. And welcome back to Science Bowl. Hope you're enjoying this game at home. We expected a good game. These teams have won already multiple times. And as we said at the top of the show, today's winner moves on to the semifinals, one of the final four that will take home the county championship later this season. If you've missed hearing about these young people before, here's your chance. Let's go over to Judith P. Hoyer and Maya. Tell us about Judith P. Hoyer Montessori School. What is a Montessori school? Could you give us a thumbnail sketch of what that is? Well, a Montessori school is where we, instead of sitting at desks and like taking tests and just doing worksheets, we have hands-on learning. Yes, indeed. And I've seen that in action. And it's a very relaxed atmosphere. You know, you have kind of each person has their own agenda, but the teacher is uh, controlling all of that. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, thing to watch. Uh, tell me the principal at your school. Our principal is Miss Spivey White. Indeed. And the sponsor of your team. Uh, Miss Strong. Miss Strong, uh, former. Runner, she was a runner-up for Teacher of the Year. And any alternates on your team? Yes, we have Chinway and Imani, and Mimi's out with the flu. Wonderful, thank you. We wish her well. It's a, a tough uh, flu season. Uh, you've told me uh, in the past about some of the wonderful opportunities at Hoyer. You said there was a group that went to China. Who went to China? Um, our club for MMUN. Wow, and how long did they stay? About a week. A week. Now, do you have like a sister relationship between schools as a result of that that you know of? Sometimes they set that sort of thing up. Usually that's between towns, maybe not individual schools. Tell me about yourself, Maya. Someday what do you hope to do? Um, I would like to be a chemist. Chemist, yes. NYU. She yes. wants to go to NYU. They're going to be lucky to get you. Paul, nice to have you back with us. Tell us the Paul story. Tell me about uh, your, your ambitions. What do you um, want to do someday? Anything as long as it's, in, as it's involving history, but probably an archaeologist. Yeah. What do you like about history? Do you have a favorite historical period? 
I was looking the other day at the, the darkest hour about Churchill in World War II, and it was just a fascinating movie in Dunkirk. And you know, sometimes you, 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 you find era, eras that are just fascinating because of the people that are there. But anyhow, you play such a good game here today. Daniel, um, I know you told me you want to be a possible, possibly be a football player someday, and you play football now. Uh, tell me some of the other things you do in your spare time. I play the piano, yes. and sometimes I can run track, yeah. and sometimes I do coding. Very good. So you're a scholar, athlete, musician. You do it all. And you have quite a pedigree here in the school system because your dad is a vice principal mm -hmm. at the Cool Spring Elementary, and your mother, mm -hmm. Zipporah, was a longtime science supervisor who uh, she was just phenomenal. And Zipporah, thank you for all that you did for Prince George's schools. Uh, you left a mark here. Uh, Let's go over and find out about Robert Goddard and Mason. Tell us about your school. Also a Montessori school. Do you, like Maya, have kind of much uh, uh, autonomy in what you do? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, tell me what you like about Goddard. Um, the teachers are really nice and funny. Yeah. Boy, funny is important, isn't it? Yeah. If you're not laughing, you know you're not learning. You know it gets to be too grim and life's too short. You got to laugh when you can. That's why some of my questions, I hope you laugh once in a while too. I know it's it's tense for you here. Tell me uh, who your principal is, Mason. Miss Womack. Yes, indeed. And she's here, and I know she's supporting you, uh, as is Miss Spivey White over there at uh, Judith P. Hoyer. And who's your sponsor? Miss Jellison. One and only. Helps us judge many, many times. And Mason, do you have any alternates on your team? Uh, we have Ella and Grayson. Wonderful. They'll be out in a few moments here. And someday uh, you're going to do something with paleontology, yeah? Yeah. Fascinated with dinosaurs. You never grow out of that, you know? That's why Jurassic Park movies, I can watch them a hundred times and they still look great. Nathan, good to have you here today. Tell us about uh, your ambitions. I intend to get rich when I grow up by building a laser. Yeah, and give us the name of the laser. An orbital hyper laser. And you best not get in his way because he intends to use this uh, to settle scores, he says yep. right now. <laughs> He's not laughing, we are. Braden, nice to have you with us today. Tell us uh, why you wanted to be on this show. Um, so Ms. Johnson, our science teacher, told, told us about it and it seemed interesting, so I decided to join the Science Bowl Club and I thought that all the people that competed in the Science Bowl itself were, yeah. I mean, it, from all the videos we watched, the Science Bowl it seemed like a really interesting competition, so yeah. I thought it would be fun to join. Are you glad you came? Yeah. Yeah, we're glad you're here. You're playing a really nice game. All right, everybody, let's get back into the game. 155 to 115. All the tougher questions are left, save for the 20-pointer in Zoo Parade, and we start out with the red team. So Maya, let's have a good second half. Green things um, for five. Green things for five. Green things for five points. Teams, if you go to Hawaii, to a luau, many of the ladies there still wear skirts made of this, Mason? Grass. Grass, grass skirts, these bladed plants. Go green. Um, Blue Where next? Okay, um, Dateline Science for 20. Dateline for 20 points. Teams, Rosalind Franklin never won a Nobel Prize because they're not given posthumously. She should have shared the Nobel Prize with James Watson and Francis Crick for the discovery of this remarkable molecule. Robert Goddard. Pass to Nathan. Nathan? Oh, what, I thought you pressed that. What? No, I thought you did. Oh, crap, I don't know. Okay. okay, I can't remember. Judith what. Hoyer, what remarkable molecule yeah. won a Nobel Prize for Watson and Crick? Franklin, Miss Franklin would have shared in it, but she died before the presentation. The Menovia? DNA. DNA, the double helix. Try again, green. Mason, go. You choose. Um, let's go Dateline Science for 25. Dateline Science for 25 points. Teams, this American statesman slash inventor slash scientist is credited with the terms positive and negative for describing different kinds of static electricity. Name him. Judith P. Hoyer. Come on, get yourself 25 points. George Washington Bush? No, not George Washington Bush. Robert Goddard, ben can Franklin? you name him? It is Ben Franklin. Yes, sir, that's what we want to hear. Good, go. Mason, you pick. Um, science potpourri for five. Potpourri for five points. Teams, the New York Knicks, the NBA team, has a seven foot three inch player that is called by his colleagues by this name, which is a one-horned fictional horse. Judith P. Hoyer. A unicorn? Unicorn? A unicorn. They call him the unicorn. Yeah, go red. 
Let's get physical for 20. Let's get physical for 20 points. Team's two-part answer, listen carefully. The closest dwarf planet to Earth is not Pluto, it is Ceres, C-E-R-E-S, which is found in the asteroid belt that is found between what two planets? Robert Goddard. Um, Mars and Jupiter. Yes, indeed, good, green, go. Okay, we're at Mason. Um, green things for 20. Green things for 20 points. Teams, onions are such tear jerker vegetables because they contain these E initial chemicals that we use for digestion. En Judith Hoyer. Enzymes. Enzymes, yes, ma'am. Go red. Body systems for 25. Body systems for 25, the big one in that category, teams. Two part answer. Two part answer. You know, you can be a type A personality if you're outgoing, or a type B personality where you're kind of retiring. That has nothing to do whether you are a type A blood type or a type B blood type, but there are two other blood types other than A and B. What are they? Robert right. Goddard. A negative and B positive, I mean A positive and B negative? No, uh, no. Oh, Judith P. No Hoyer, positive. there are four blood types, oh, A, no B, and these two, whereas personalities, there's just two, A and B. O negative and O positive. No, it, O is right, it's O and AB. It is O, A, B and AB. No points. Red team, go. You have a 15 point advantage, Maya. Zuparade for five. Zuparade for five points. Teams, some people call this a meteorological marmot. We know this animal as Punxsutawney Phil for predicting the weather. Maya. Groundhog. The Groundhog. Groundhog Day, February 2nd. They yank him out of his den in Punxsutawney. Why he doesn't bite them, I don't know. Go red. Yes, ma'am. Let's get physical for 25. Let's get physical for 25, the big one in that category. Teams, if you are a meteorologist, you can use a wet bulb or a dry bulb psychrometer or a hygrometer to determine this variable in the environment. What would you measure with those instruments, Maya? Precipitation. Not precipitation, good try, Mason. Humidity. Humidity, yes, sir, that's what we want to hear. Good, go. Um. You have a five point lead, where next? Body systems for five. Body systems for five points. Teams, if you are so in love, they say that you are head over what? Heels. In love, Judy Hoyer. Heels. Heels, that's right, good. Thank you, Maya, go. Science potpourri for 20. Again, please. Science potpourri for 20. Potpourri for 20 points. We have a tie score of 190. All this is the 20 point question in science potpourri. Teams, if you close your mouth and hold your nose and sneeze, you could rupture your pharynx. Robert Goddard? Uh, blood vessel? Nope. Judith P. Hoyer, you could rupture your pharynx if you pinch your nose and close your mouth while you sneeze. Your pharynx is another name for what body part? Your eye? Your throat. Your throat. Go again, please, red. Still tied, 190. Let's get physical for five. Let's get physical for five, Let's get physical for five points. Teams. If there are cumulonimbus clouds in the sky and lots of updrafts, this form of precipitation gets heavier and heavier with each cycle until it falls from the sky. Judith Hoyer. Snow. Snow. Not snow. Robert Goddard. Hail. Gets heavier and heavier with each updraft until it's so heavy it falls. Hail. Hail. Yeah. Good. Green. Go. Um. Dateline science for five. Dateline science for five points. Teams. January 31st, 2018, a super blue moon total solar eclipse. I will give you five points if you can tell me what phase of the moon occurs twice in one month. Yes, Maya. Full moon. Full moon. That's the blue moon. Good. Red. Go. Four questions left. Body, Body systems score. for 20. Body systems for 20 points. Teams, I need to know what each of these letters stands for. When you're sleeping, and you're dreaming, it's called REM sleep. What is REM sleep, Robert Goddard? Rapid eye movement. Got it, good, green, go. Yes, man, All right, nice. go Mason. We got it. Okay, that was um, a reaction. Zoo Parade for 25. Zoo Parade for 25 points. Big one in that category, teams in the movie The Jungle Book. There was a giant orangutan looking thing called Gigantopithecus, King Louie. He was, at one time, a real creature, the largest ever member of this order. Apes. Not apes. Judith Hoyer. 
what order was that Gigantopithecus, that orangutan-like creature, belong to? The same order that includes all of the monkeys and even ourselves. Mammals. No, ma'am. Primates. Primates is the order. All right. Two questions left. Green, you choose. Mason. Uh, Carefully. Wait, wait, wait. Go. Green things for 25. Green things for 25 points. Teams, coniferous plants like firs and pines are known as gymnosperms. The flowering plants are known as angiosperms. Spell angiosperm. <laughs> Judith P. Hoyer, spell angiosperm. Who's going to spell? Paul. Paul. All right, Paul, say the word for me. Angio. Spell, the, say the word. Angio. Angiosperm. Oh, angiosperm. A N G E O S P E R M. So close, so close. All right, Robert Goddard, you can seal it here if you can spell angiosperm. Who's my speller? Angiosperm or angiosperms? Singular. Okay. Angiosperm. A N G I O S P E R M. That is correct. <laughs> yes, it is. Angiosperm. Last question of the game, a science pope brief for 25 points. It's a multiple choice question. Teams, all doctors, when they graduate from medical school, take the Hippocratic Oath. And they swear that they will not use a knife, even if lithotomy is involved. Is lithotomy the removal of an appendix? Is it the removal of a gallstone or the removal of a tumor? Tumor. Maya, tumor. not a tumor. Lithotomy. Doctors swear they will not even use a knife to I remove. I think appendix. It was one neither of you chose, a oh, stone, a gallstone. It was a great game, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like Robert Goddard is semifinalist number one. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. What can I say? What a game. It was the Battle of the Montessori's, and really both of them won. It came down to a tie, then another tie. One question separated them. That testifies to the skill up here. Not only are these smart kids, they are good sports. They've been congratulating each other already, which we're about to do right now. Our final tally is Judith Hoyer, 195, Robert Goddard, 240. Congratulations, Nathan, Mason, and Braden. You are a semifinalist. Miss Womack, Miss Jellison, congratulations. And also we've got back there, Ella is back there. And also we've got Grayson. Nice round of applause also for Judith Hoyer. Daniel, Maya, and Paul. Miss Bobby White, Miss Strong, and we've got our alternates back there, Chinwei and Maya, and uh, not Maya, who's back there? Who is back there? Who is back there? Chinwei, Chinwei and Imani, I'm sorry. Congratulations to you guys. You, you gave it your best. You should not even been here this year and you came this close, this close to winning it all. Next year, next year. Next time, join us for another playoff match when we will determine semifinalist number two. I'm Dave Zarin. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.